Hello folks, how's it going? It's me, Des Kays. I'm out in the shed. Um, I thought what I'd do in this video is um, I'm going on a carving course this weekend down with uh, Joe O'Leary and um, what I want to do is I've had people commenting and asking me some questions about the Matilda pack so what I want to do is because we all love a lovely because a lot of us love a little bit of a kit load out don't we so what I'm going to do is kind of go through um, obviously my kit load out and maybe I'll chuck in a few thoughts just for my humble opinion and uh, how I'm getting on with this pack so far all right so stay tuned so here goes so I've got a number of rucksacks that I use okay and of late you've been seeing me use in my videos if you watch my channel you watch the videos on my channel I've been using this Matilda pack by Helicontex now I love a lot of the Helicontex stuff um, it's really come up in the world um, good quality gear and being that this rucksack is obviously quite comfortable um, it's 35 litres now I think that is just the main bucket that's 35 litres and then obviously you've got this Alice system because it's sort of simply based on the Alice system it's then got these three external pockets to sit on the back plus all the, mo the, the molly straps and everything else that obviously you can use for, for using for your carrying system now for me personally I'm not a big lover of just a single bucket rucksacks um, simply being is that I find you still have to if you're still carrying this amount of kit and you put them into just one that one of those single bucket um, rucksacks you tend to find that it looks like you've overfilled it because you've got nowhere really to put anything on the external side of the on the external part of the rucksack for me personally I like having um, either pouches that are on that are actually connected to the rucksack itself or then having the option to, of using the molly system um, we've added pouches to it and straps and things like that which is obviously what I'm doing as I'm going along now it's still early days for me really with this rucksack I've only had it a few months um, and all the time I'm learning but what I wanted to do is just obviously share with you some of my little thoughts what I'm carrying all that sort of stuff I mean Bearing in mind we're in August now, okay, so it's kind of still summer. Um, starting to get a tiny bit chilly, maybe in the evenings. It's obviously the the um, the old the old uh, lights drawing in. Um, so at the moment, what I'm packing is not for something that I might pack for the winter. But then saying that, I could, I've pretty much been able okay within reason maybe apart from my sleeping system to maybe use the same gear year round all right so let's take a look at some of the gear then that i'm carrying all right now i wasn't really sure how to play this as a as a kit load out whether i need to get all the gear out um, or just talk about what's in in any of the pouches i think what i'll do is i'll physically get the gear out lay it on the floor and you can kind of get a picture of obviously what i'm what i'm carrying in this in this system right okay first of all then i've got my wildlife hatchet now the reason why the wildlife hatchet is in there is because i'm going away the weekend i'm doing a carving course i'm going to be carving a cookser okay so i'm going to be doing loads of um, fine chopping and stuff like that so i've packed the wildlife hatchet okay which i tend to like carrying this more than i do even the forest axe sometimes it's probably one of my favorite tools um, for you know when i go out into the woods at the moment you can see uh, I'm making an atlatl arrow at the moment there's some goose feathers on there um, digress um, as you if you saw from the last video when I did this when I did the quite long video and I was on my own Mac in his infinite wisdom as um, he loves making a shelter does that man and he's given me this one to try out now I actually set it up um, but I had to go home unfortunately so I didn't get to sleep under it but obviously I spent the day under it when it was uh, howling down with rain now this is the poncho uh, this is the, the shelter that he's got that he's, that he's lent me again I've asked if I could borrow it for this weekend um, now what I've done with this I've actually put a couple of little straps I did have a couple of lengths of paracord with cord locks on them but they kept coming undone and at one point this fell out and the last thing I want to do it'd be more than my life's worth for me to, to obviously lose this 
um, lose this shelter. But anyway, what I've done was I've put some better straps on there, obviously to hold it in place. Now what I aim to do is to obviously keep my shelter carrying it on the outside of my pack. And the reason being, and I've noticed it so many times and I've never got round to doing it, is that when I pack up after a weekend, I'm going home, if it has been raining, one thing that I'm doing is I'm packing a sodden tarp or a shelter inside my pack and then I've always got it in the back of my mind that if I'm going to move on to another location and I'm going to have to reset up again then possibly what's inside that rucksack will get wet now the storage bag that most tarps come in yes they're waterproof to some degree but they do let water through and then obviously what happens is the gear inside your rucksack gets wet as well if it isn't in pouches and stuff like that and there's nothing worse than having wet gear anyway so what I intend to do probably from now on is I'm always going to keep the um, keep my tarp um, poncho whatever it is I'm using on the outside of my pack and I'll literally just strap it there one because it's outside okay if it does start dripping everywhere then I don't mind the pockets on the outside getting wet obviously better than getting the main bucket of the sack wet so there's the shelter all right now as it's a dorm with um, other uh, molly straps on there and all the rest of this rucksack um, also on the hip belt you've got these um, you've got these you've got the molly straps as well okay now what I've done with mine if I start with the hip belts while I'm here all right I've got my uh, mechanics gloves these are absolutely knackered the ends are absolutely knackered on the fingertips so I've cut them down all right with a carabiner there this little pouch was given to me by uh, wandering fox and uh, wasn't really using it for anything but then what I did but then what I have started using it for and it's working quite well is just to put my anchor charger in now because there's nothing worse when you're videoing and stuff like that you've got to find somewhere to put your um to put your your camera equipment as it were and normally i'm carrying the tripod with the gopro but it's also nice to have just this location to obviously store away your battery which in this case is this pouch that i'm using here on the other side okay what I've got, I've got one of these little, um, these again from Helicontex. I mean, they've got some lovely natty little pouches out there. Forget what this one's is, but basically what I've got in here at the moment is some stale air. So it's a tin that basically fits in there lovely and it's full of air. Okay, so I'm yet to find a use for that. Okay. And then the pouch I've got round to the side here okay is i'm going to flip the camera down a tiny bit so you can see it a bit better um is this little pouch here and basically what i'm using it for is fire lighting kit kit you probably would have seen me go into this um you know through me through some of the other videos all right so i'm keeping my fire lighting kit in now now um some people might frown upon this it was something i used to do when i was not so much in the army but i did it a number of times especially when i was a kid and that was um probably the reason why but um you used to sort of strap a knife to your rucksack good thing or bad thing that's your opinion please don't have a pissing competition with me it's just what i'm doing okay and then what i've got here is i'm basically put my cans bowl knife attached onto the left st shoulder strap okay so i've got access to to the knife it clicks down it, obviously it clicks away quite sh uh, quite well no trouble of that coming out and then all i've done is i've kind of taped it on there with duct tape and then some other cord there um, just to hold it in place all right so that's i've got a knife there as well i mean admittedly i've got my wildlife hatchet i've always got my um my nomad by ben alford that's always attached to my hip with a ferro rod so you know i mean some of you might be shouting at the camera now saying yeah but what if you lose your rucksack and all the rest of it that i will still have some means of um a knife on me and i will still have a fire kit in the pocket of my jacket or have it in a in a carrying system on me as well okay so i've at least got that with me all right so that's that bit and um, what i might do in maybe future videos if people want to know i'll sort of show you my fire lighting kit that's in there if you want and also i'll show you what's in the little tin of air <laughs> right so now if we go to the left side oh we go to the left side of the, the rucksack right so in here in this pouch okay this is one of those pouches that mactite will give me and it's the um apparently they're the 
uh, apparently patches that are issued to the special boat squadron some many 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 years ago okay i'm going to be acquiring a second one max going to give me a second one as well and we did have a dibble and um, basically what i've got in now is my boundless voyage um, water bottle and the mug okay so there's the military canteen the, the um, boundless voyage that's the lid and then I'll bear with us a sec while i take the other two pieces out Got that strap done up a little bit there. And then in there I've got the two um, containers that come with it. Okay, what I've done is similar to my Pathfinder cup, I've attached a piece of wire already on there, so I haven't got to worry with the uh, with the with the wire you know that they give you for the for hanging the pot. So I've got the main pot there. Okay, then I've got the smaller one. Now the smaller one I tend to be using more so now for charring stuff, whether it's um, you know char cloth or I, I recently used it um, to boil down some pine pitch. Um, so yeah, so that's that sorted. All right, the next pouch. Got the next pouch, next pocket. Okay, now as I've always sort of promoted day fryer stuff. All right, I've got quite a series of pouches in there. I've got a first aid kit. I've got a wash kit. I've got a, um, I've got some cordage, I've got a multi-tool in one of the pouches, okay, uh, and also my arse wipe kit. Alright, so at the top, straight at the top there for easy access is my um, first aid kit, one of Dave's pouches. Um, the next one, this is the uh, wash kit, okay, because you've got to keep that body clean. And then in the next one, I've got in here is basically some tools. I've got a flex cut, um, the multi tool. Um, got a little cut, that's a carving tool, that's a leather man carving tool. The reason why I've put that leather sheath around it um, is basically because sometimes when you're handling it, all right, and I've only got soft hands, it's nice just to protect your hands when you're actually sort of maybe using the blades. So I think that's quite a good idea, okay. And then also I've got some, I've got a, a DC4 sharpening stone and then in there as well I've got some cordage. All right, so it always comes in handy there, normally just for, uh, some of that cordage really is just for craft projects. And I've got some number 36 bank line in there. All right, and then blue, that's got the soil water filter in there, okay. And then finally, which I'm not really sure whether this should be at the bottom or at the top, and that's basically my arse white paper, okay. So there's some wipes in there, uh, um, uh, biodegradable um, um, tissue paper, all right, and that's in there, and that's basically just for my, uh, for doing the old obligatory, you know, when you go to the toilet. All right, so that's that first pouch. I think as well, just as note, when I was having a play around with it, I think that these two pouch, the two pockets on or pouches, whatever you want to call them, on the outside are slightly bigger than the one in the middle. I seem to found that I could get more in one of them than I did in the actual middle one, but who knows? So in this one, then I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave that there. But in here, what I've got. I've basically got a bottle of honey. Now the reason why I've got the honey is because um, when you go on the course, your tea and coffee and all that's free. And I don't try to take sugar in my tea, but I do like something quite sweet. So I've obviously added some honey just to put a smidgen in my uh, brew when obviously I have a cup of tea or a cup of the old Darjeeling coffee. Then I've got a pair of leather gloves in here. The leather gloves are obviously heat resistant. So if you know, if you're, if you're accessing stuff around the fire and stuff like that, or you've got hot pots and all the rest of it, then I've just got a normal pair of, you know, sort of like a pair of heat resistant gloves that I bought off Amazon for about a tenner. All right, and then finally what's in there is my brew kit. All right, another one of Dave's pouches. Mr. Fry's pouches. Um, basically that's all my brew kit in there folks for connect if you're a regular viewer to the channel you'll see me getting this out all the time you know it's got my tea um milk powder some sugar in there um and then some sachets some ffs and uh, vitamin c tablets and then it's also got my pathfinder lid in there as well all right so that's that that's that patch taken care of now in this one okay I like to carry two bottles of water, okay, we're not always, you know, it's not always, um, 
not always adorned in some of the woodland I go to, getting access to water. Um, so it's handy to obviously carry some in, maybe take advantage of the um, of the rain and stuff like that. Um, but as I say, I do carry two water bottles. And in this one, it's obviously got my the good old orange collapsible cup, folder cup. That's just my little bag there. You all know it's got, well, most of you do, if you, unless you're watching the videos for the first time. It's got my transier burner in there and then some other bits and pieces that are just makes it easier for me to use um, when, I'm, when I'm using certain kit within my, uh, within my varied system. All right, I've got a bottle of fuel. I've got this bioethanol and it's obviously got, um, it's got a little bit of food coloring in there. So obviously when I use the, uh, when I take out the speeds to stow stuff, because that's white, all right, when I pour that in there, I can obviously see that that's gone in there and we're obviously biophenol's clear. All right, just putting a tiny bit of food coloring in there. This was suggested to me by one um, viewer to the channel, uh, which I thought was a good idea. So now I've, uh, now I always add a bit of uh, food coloring to my biophenol when I'm using that particular stove. Oh, I've got stainless steel Nalgene bottle. Right, and then I've also got good old trusty faithful Pathfinder cup. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh yeah, but you've already got two, you know what, I mean I have, I've got two, I've got two cooking pots if I want to use them. Okay, you know, if I was to take the water bottle out, okay, these, are, these don't really weigh much, do they? They're compact, they don't take up a lot of space because they all nestle into each other. So for the practicality it works, if anything, the thing that's taking up the weight is the water in the water bottle. But I do like to have a couple of um, pots with me in case I'm sort of cooking multiple stuff. All right, but that's for me. I'm carrying it, so it doesn't matter, does it? All right, so that's the mug. And then finally, what I've got in here is good old um, uh, stove by Bushcraft Essentials. This is the titanium one. And as you probably well know as well from the videos, that gets used hell a lot as well. Okay. Now, finally, in this little pouch here, as I say, this is the opposite side to the SBS one. All right, now in here, what I've got at the moment is I've got my Helicon Tex. This is just a wind runner. Now I've got two wind runners. I've got one in black. Uh, if you're following me on Instagram, you'll see me wear it because I'm out normally running quite a lot, even though I'm a smoker um, or training. Um, I've got a black Helicon Tex wind runner that I've had for some time now. It's getting a bit battered and knackered. Um, but it, I, I wear it quite a lot, especially when it's quite, um, you know, when it's quite windy or the weather's a little bit inclement. And then secondly, I've got a Pendicott one, okay, which is really, because I liked it, I bought myself another one and this one really is just for going out into the woods or bushcraft. I don't seem to wear it that much, but I'm obviously carrying, it's, it's living in my kit now and I'm bringing it with me wherever I go. And then finally in here is some, um, some spare bow strings and all that sort of stuff for my bow because I'll obviously be taking my bows out a bit more just to have a little practice and everything else not hunting animals or hunting people for that matter because you're not allowed to do it here in the UK unfortunately I think somewhere in, in this is, there is a town that dates back to wherever that apparently you're still allowed to uh, hunt Welsh people after a certain time I don't know if that's true you know and this, that's no offence to white people uh, to well, people to Welsh people because I've obviously got some Welsh friends out there and Anyway, I digress, as usual. I've got that Velcro there on the front, so if you want to put a badge of choice, you know, if you want to put a Des Catties badge on there, you go on my Etsy store and there's some on there for sale. Support the channel, as I keep saying. But anyway, you've got the good old faithful, um, you know, zip, zip top. Now in mine, what I do is I've, I've got a piece of orange cord there that's attached to one of the zips, and it's actually attached there so it can't go anywhere, and in there's a head torch. All right, just a Petzl head torch, okay, in there, the Tactica. All right, I've got a, a, a Beth, okay, which again is handy for, you know, water and stuff like this. Again, another faithful plug to my, uh, shameless plug to the Etsy store. I've got these as well, these little leather bags, and what they actually are, they contain... Uh, two rubbish sacks in there and it's nothing worse than having to when you take your rubbish home with you um, if you're a good little bushcrafter or outdoors person um, then obviously it makes sense to uh, have a collection of bin liners and that sort of stuff so all rubbish sacks so you can take your, 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 uh, your stuff home or garbage sacks as they say over the pond they're not good at you know. good old goal zero 
rechargeable uh, lantern. What one you use is down to you, I don't really care. Sometimes I take a UK candle holder. Okay, and then finally all I've got in now is good old, uh, is one of my old citronella candles. This one's been used a couple of times. Okay, I literally just, you know, refill it, refill it and use it. I've had a lot of good um, feedback on these. So, uh, you know, again, if you're interested folks, you know, check out my Etsy store. All right, so that's what I've got in there. Actually, I'll leave it all out. And then what I'll do is I'll show you a quick clip at the end of what's actually inside the box. Hey, why not? Right, so it, on the inside of the lid we've got the mesh, we've got the mesh part in there. Now what I tend to keep in here, as you will, if you know, if you you know, you say if you watch the channel, I keep all my stuff to do with putting up my shelters in here. All right. So I've got six plastic pegs. All right. I think there's six, two, four, six. Yeah, six plastic pegs in there. All right, and just a, an old sort of tent bag. I keep them separate to my uh, to my other little kit there that goes in there as well, which you're going to see now. Okay, this is one of uh, yeah flat pouch by Day Fryers, and in there what I do is I keep all my different bits. So I got ridge line. I keep the ridge line with my poncho and stuff like that. But obviously, because I'm borrowing Max Shelter, the ridge line is in here with a load of different. Um, pull out uh, with loads of different um, cordage in there and also I've got some uh, some of the MSR mini um, tent pegs and also I've got those toggle ones as well uh, those awning elastics as well that I recently got given by John Fitz given all right so that's that and I'm falling asleep yet got another spare ridge line Another spare ridge line. Never have enough ridge line, can you? That's just basically a toggle or a bit of hauser laid cordage or sizal string, whatever. And then finally, what's in here that need to come out really and go in my Alux kit, but that's just for my Alux shower. Okay, I was actually looking for these the other day, and these are just the pegs and that that go with it, and now I found them. Oh, another one of the morning toggles. All right, so that's basically what's in there then, okay? So everything that I use for putting up my shelters, extra cordage and stuff like that, the last thing you want to be do, even though it's something that's quite good to do, isn't it? But sitting down, having a plaque cordage out with nettles and, or bramble and stuff like that, um, you know, it's just a, it's such a time consuming task. So it's handy to have all the cordage and all that sort of stuff to hand inside your kit. That's why we carry rucksacks, isn't it? Right, so in the main bucket then, apparently it's around 35 litres this, so I'll just open it up there. It's not packed to its, to its full extent, okay. In there, in this leather bag, this is just an add-on, okay, I've got a pot of mash, because for my dinner on, on Saturday night I'm going to be having steak, mash, asparagus and gravy, alright, so that's just in there, because it's in a pot, it's a simplicity, pour hot water in, mix it up to the line, and obviously I've got mashed potato there. All right, but that wouldn't always be in there. In here is my carving kit, slightly bigger than usual because this is the one that I either keep in my shed, blah, 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 but because I'm on a carving course, I'll bring it, I'm bringing some of my own carving tools with me, even though they might, they might not be much use for cooks are making. Got a jacket in there, that's the Helicon Tex one. All right. Um, good old cook kit, yeah, my frying pan, sheet of leather, spatula, blah, 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 that's all in there, okay. Uh, just me throw out mat, sit down, I've actually covered this in wax and everything else now, just so that, because at one point the water was getting through it, especially during the winter months, it was taking a bit of abuse. So um, what I've done was I just put some of the G1000 wax on it from, uh, you know, from Fell Raven, and it sort of helped it. So it stops it from getting my little bum damp. I'm taking my kettle. Yeah, again, some of you are probably shouting at the camera. Yeah, yeah, but you've got cooking pots down there. But you know what? Sometimes it's just nice just to fill a kettle up with water. And like I say, I'm carrying it, you're not. All right, so there it is. My ration pack in there is, um, I've got my breakfast. I'm not having any cooked breakfast. I'm just literally having rolled oats. I've made up my own protein. Uh, mix in with their raisins and all sorts of stuff so that's my breakfast and then I've got some snack bars and stuff like that in there some pasta some noodles 
and just some extra bits like that. Okay, so that's my ration pack, okay. My possible's pouch, I'm not gonna get that out. You know what you if you you know you'll see that there's a video up on the channel somewhere, you know, for you to go and have a look at that if you so wish. Right, this is my that's the whoopee, I think it's in here. That's my camouflage jacket. Yeah, it's a whoopee. Oh no, it's not. I lie. I'm actually bringing me boots, me um, me thermal boots. So yeah, in here I've got a got a pair of bivy boots. Um, these are the health sport ones. I bought them off me mate uh, Tim, uh, rough timber, and uh, he just wanted getting rid of them. Really, I ain't used them. So I bought myself these boots, and what I'm going because I'm only taking my uh, swag man the weekend. Um, I thought I'd take them boots with me and try them out as part of my uh, my sleep system. So I've got my bivy boots there. That's me whoopee in there. I love it because it packs down quite small into that bag. Okay. Good old roll mat. My Helicon swag. In there. Right. Regular viewer at the channel, you would have seen that so many times. Got me uh, me outback saw in here. This is the uh, the new range that Silky have bought out. So this is the Gone Boy, and this is the outback. You know the sort of mid saw. You know with the uh, with the brown sort of handle. Again, sometimes I put that on the outside, but normally because of here in the UK with knife laws and stuff like that, I normally just stick it away in the rucksack. Okay, it's got a little carabiner on there as well, so I can attach it to the outside of the package if I need to. Alright, in here is my, obviously my pillow, um, spare pair of socks, my hat, if I, if I get cold, you know, I keep a separate woolen hat for in my uh, sleeping, in my sleeping system, and then obviously my pillow as well. Look at there folks, really finished. Ground sheet. And then I'll keep a couple of garbage bags, or rubbish bags, garbage bags, bloody hell. A couple of garbage bags in there. And then finally I've got me, uh, this, I've got a couple of throw down grills here. I've got one by Boundless Voyage, which is the titanium one. Again, nice and light, nice and flat. But this is one by, uh, this is the mini throw down grill by TJM Metalworks, okay. And this is the throw down one. Um, yeah, I'll throw it down. Sometimes I'll cut a bit of wood into a log, stake the wood into the ground and use it as a platform. Um, and so on and so forth. But again, when it's in the pack, it's just slip down the back there. You know, it doesn't take up no space at all. And, uh, and that really is it. All right, now, let's pull that down. Now, just to clarify, folks, you know, as I say, the, the season, you know, my gear personally doesn't change that much. I use the same stuff throughout the year. As it gets colder, then maybe my sleeping system might change slightly. But what I like to do for me personally, for my own little sort of challenge and everything else, I like to try and see if I can get away with my sleeping system throughout the year. Sometimes my, uh, you know, sometimes I'll think, yeah, I'll do it, and then other times I won't. You know, sometimes I might take my down sleeping bag with me. It depends how sort of challenging I want to be to myself, how far I want to push myself with certain things. Um, which again, that's down to me personally. I don't take a, a set of spare clothing because normally I'm out just for a weekend. Um, sort of like if I was going for a week, then yes, I would take a, a spare set of clothing and they would only be used in an emergency anyway. Um, obviously I would bring maybe a couple of extra pairs of socks, extra pairs of underpants because there's nothing worse than having a smelly area uh, and your feet because they're obviously your, your number one for transport. So it makes sense to obviously look after your feet all right and it's good for your morale to obviously have a wash keep the body clean and so on and so forth all right so that's my loadout i don't really want to sort of you know sort of 
go too much into anything else I just wanted to show you the gear that I'm taking with me the weekend that pretty much lives in my rack sack I mean for people that have watched my other loadout videos what you pretty much see apart from one or two or few other items is what I have all the time and that's what I try and stick to year round if I can all right all right so there it is then that's all the gear all right, I'm not going to sort of go, you know, that pretty much is it, all right? Does it look a lot? Maybe it does. I don't think it does, really. But when you start breaking your kit down, you're not actually quite too sure, <laughs> you know, what you actually take, you know. Yes, I can, I can get around it by leaving certain bits of kit at home. But most of the time, you know, I want to go out and practice skills. You know, challenging myself is part of that. Is part of that just by going out and practicing the skills, like at the moment, making at lattles and at lattle spears and things like that stuff that I'm just plotting around with, either in my shed or what you'll see in the videos when I'm out camping or out, of, out for the day. Okay. Um, so there it is folks all right so thanks for watching please share your comments folks don't get into a pissing competition with me about stuff because all I'll do is I'll just delete your comments and report you to YouTube all right I can't be asked with that stuff all right I'm here just to share with you my 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 personal experience some of my knowledge and obviously hopefully you can deem you can take some of it away or you can share some of your experiences with me and give me some ideas of what kit to take Alright, so thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you on the next video.